There's over 40 individual placeholders in Hypixel housing as of now. I mean, look at this. Yeah, yeah, some are easy to understand, like, but what is up with random ends and do we even want to talk about date units? In today's video, I'll be going over every single placeholder, their syntax, and every single one's main use that it's used for. And yeah, not all of them are going to have a specific use case, but I'm going to try my best to get the best one for every single placeholder. So feel free to use the timestamps in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive right in. Real quick, before we can get into the big realm of placeholders, we gotta talk about what a placeholder is and how to even use one. So a placeholder is a string of text like that you put on a hologram, the scoreboard, action bars, titles, or anything else of that nature. But you can actually not place it on NPCs because it just gives you an error like you cannot set it as the name. Pretty easy fix, all you do two blocks, hologram, and R, and R. Place your NPC and voila, you got some text above your NPC. And of course, like I said earlier, holograms, you can indeed do placeholders. And how could I forget? You can also do it on chat messages. And the strings will update based on the player. Like for me, see player.name, it shows my name and Douglas right here because that is my name, my username. So anybody else on any other game on this house will not see Minor Man Douglas. Only I am seeing Minor Man Douglas. And this is the same for player stats and many different stats that are not publicly changed. And every single placeholder has something in common. It is surrounded by... Each one is surrounded by percentage marks, different main categories are at the beginning, like server, then player, house, date, and then there's a dot, and then comes the main placeholder title. Some of them, you actually do a slash and then you can enter a value. That's basically it. Now, now I guess it's time to dive straight into every single placeholder. So by typing the placeholders command, you get a giant list like I showed earlier. The first one we're going to start off with are the server prefixes. Throughout this video, if I didn't mention this earlier, I'm going to be using the test placeholder command. We're going to start off with server name. So what it does is it shows the back end server name. And well, the syntax is pretty self-explanatory. It's server, the prefix, and then dot name. So like if you're doing bungy court or server hopping and you're reporting a bug to an admin, they visit your house. Yeah, I don't know what this would be used for, not gonna lie. And you're probably like, oh yeah, this is shown by default on the scoreboard, but it's actually not. It's actually a completely different placeholder that's shown by default on the scoreboard. This is actually one, it's percent server dot short name. It's literally the exact same thing, but the only difference, it does not say many, it just has an M. As you can see in the scoreboard right below the text, it says housing. So we already finished all the server ones. The server prefix is like the second shortest prefix out of all the placeholders. So next we're gonna do the player prefixes. This is the largest category for all the placeholders and is one of the most useful categories that you are gonna be using all the time. So we're gonna start off right at the top with one of the most important ones, percent player dot name, which shows the player name and there's actually a lot of uses. If you're making NPC dialogue, it can be like, hello and in the name. Or maybe when you join a house, there's a big title that appears on screen that says, Welcome, Minor Man Douglas. And player name, just like other stats, it shows whatever player is looking at it, it shows their name. Next is player ping. Now this shows the ping of a player, and it's shown in milliseconds. So percent player dot ping, and as you can see right now, it's 71 milliseconds, which, which is not good. Yeah, don't go into the comments and make fun of that. I'm looking at you right now. I know you're thinking about it. Yeah. So some uses are like on a scoreboard so a player knows if they're lagging because of PC or internet or they don't have a client to show their milliseconds. Like if you have a PvP house, you're trying to do matchmaking, but the matchmaking systems are extremely difficult and hard to make and not gonna lie, I don't know if they're 100% possible to make a fully in-depth matchmaking system in housing. So next I'm gonna be in survival for the next two because it is player health. Now there's two placeholders I'm gonna go over in the next minute. One of which is player health, which not to be confused with player max health. So my health is currently set to 20, which 20 is 10 hearts, because one heart, two health. And if we test the placeholder, percent player.health, it'll show 20. And updating it to double, set it to 40. Oh no, I have poison. Percent player.health, oh yeah, my health's lowered. So as you can see, it is the current health the player has. This is pretty useful on sims where any sort of health upgrade is present, PvP houses, like dungeon sims, anything where health needs to be an action bar, 
in a specific number and the scoreboard. Now the other one that I kept babbling on about earlier is player max health, which is demonstrated by percent player dot max health. The max health is not separated through anything, it's just one single word. And when doing it, it shows the max amount of health the player has set. It is set through the change player max health. If you don't know what an action does, I have an actions guide on my channel going through each action and I'm pretty sure it even has timestamps in it. If it wasn't too lazy to add them in, but they'll be added eventually. Trust me. And just get them, they're added. I'm not gonna do that to you. But anyway, there's pl also player hunger. Player hunger, pretty self-explanatory. You do percent player dot hunger percent and it's 20 just like hearts one hunger two hunger points yeah hunger points is the best way i can put it don't know what else to say for that and some uses is it could display in action bar by health which i wouldn't really see a point in doing if hunger is already shown down there or in the scoreboard it can be used for like comparisons like if player hunger equals this then do this okay the next one is to display the player experience points and i'm heavily emphasizing on points you know see why in a minute this placeholder shows player xp points given naturally by a bottle and it does not work with this action since this is give experience levels not points so when i do this as you can see it does not increase the level but just my points so if i do syntax percent player dot experience it says 80. do it again 84. Levels do not work for this. Points, they do. Best way to put it. Let's move on. Next is player XP levels, which is a lot easier represented by percent player dot level. Simple as that. And it says level 62, just like in my, just like above my hotbar, it says 62. It can be used in RPGs and action bar. But I mean, again, I don't know why since it's literally right below the action bar. But again, it's used for like comparisons. Like if a stat is equal or greater than player experience and you can put a placeholder in the comparison then do this so those two are what i would call siblings just like the health and max health there's another pair of siblings there is the player version and player protocol so the player version is represented by percent player dot version now this is just used for display purposes it's just 1.8.x like if you want to display on the scoreboard, but if you go down, there's actually a player protocol, which is the player client version in number form. So if I use the syntax percent player dot protocol percent, it says 47. This may seem like a random number to you, but it can be used in actions on like 1.8.x. Like decimals cannot be used for a stat in housing. Doing a protocol like this makes it key on point. And you can use it to target version specific bugs. For example, in parkour, my parkour skills aren't the greatest, but if I'm correct, the enchanting table height is different between versions. And if you don't want the player to get it somewhere, or you do, if they're in a certain protocol version, then do this. But if they're not in this version, then TP them out. And every single version has a different number. Every single version snapshot. You can view on the wiki link in the description, but the one you'll be using most is 1.8.9, which 1.8.x, any version of 1.8, is 47. Surprisingly, the next couple placeholders are not siblings. There is the player game mode, which is the player game mode in text in all caps, like the classic scoreboard. So if I do slash test placeholder, percent player, dot game mode, percent, it says it in all caps, again, just like the old scoreboards. This is good for if you want to easily show it on a free build or anything alike. So the next placeholder is actually kind of self-explanatory about what it does, but it's actually one of the most useful. This is percent player dot region dot name. I know two dots, but you can live with this. And as you can see, when I test the placeholder, it says none. Now you are not going to be in a region until you set one up using the region selector tool, going to systems regions and creating a region, which I have a whole regions guide that goes in depth at that. But this video is strictly about placeholders. I'll link that in the description below if you want to see that. But what this can be used for is to show what building or area a player is in, like a sim, tycoon, really any house. And just a lot in the action bar along with some awesome placeholders we have yet to cover which will be covered later in the video so highly highly recommend staying until the end and it can also be used in conditionals when comparing if player is in the forest region then give them plus one gold a second but if they're in a tundra region give them minus one gold a second because it's gold now we're back to another sibling now this time it isn't siblings it's a whole triplet 
So if we do slash test placeholder percent player dot location dot x percent ignore that I got it wrong the first time but anyway it shows the x if I do the same thing percent player dot location dot but this time I do y it'll show the player's y position and in the z will show the player's z position so if you don't know already x is left and right y is up and down and z is forward and backward and then if you go diagonal it changes both x and z in different patterns just like x y and z they're coordinates that are in basically every single pro program imaginable and then blender just decided to be different and decided to make y a different value don't ask i do not want to get into blender specifics right now wait why am i even talking about blender in a minecraft video yeah what am i even doing today but a use for this is like items that can tp a player for example if i slash edit this and go to actions when the player right clicks it may increase the stat x by so many y by so many z by so many i use my current x and increase it by like for example five and until a player using the stats you can make advanced things where if i right click this i can tp just like aspect at the end it can get a bit complicated but it's extremely fun to use also like the scoreboard or action bar showing the player's position because not everybody's going to have a client that shows their position now there's actually two more locations that i have yet to mention it's the pitch and the yaw just like the others it's percent player dot location dot pitch and then there's also a dot yaw so by pressing f3 you can easily see them the yaw is left and right which the yaw is the left value and the pitch is up and down by looking and let me say this again yaw and pitch are not based on movement they're based on the way you're looking so yeah that can also be used with coordinates that way you're not just going to be facing a random direction or you're playing an animation which alex warrior on his dungeon sim had this also animation okay are you surprised but we got another group literally a group a group of placeholders that is literally about you guessed it groups what a knee slapper so for this group of groups yeah wordplay but for this group of groups there is a player group name and tag if you don't already know i cover permissions groups in like an old video but there's a tag which is like what people see and you can toggle over chosen chat and then there's the actual name of the group nobody sees the name of the group except when it's like okay this player's been changed to the group name of blah 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 or you're using the slash group command those are the only times the group name is used the group tag is used in chat and in the tab menu so for the group name you do percent player dot group dot name percent and for the group tag you do percent player dot group dot tag and then some groups you can set the priority which you can easily view by doing slash player dot group dot priority owner i currently set to an extremely high number but priority is basically just what order should the groups be in priority for example if the guest has permission to ban people they can't ban someone higher than them that's the best way to put it but really technical stuff and the last player dot group is group color so this one isn't what you think if you do slash test placeholder player dot group dot color percent which is the exact syntax as i need nothing pops up now you're probably asking why in the world is nothing popping up well the reason is is because if i put text after the placeholder it's the color of the group so what this is used for is whatever group color you are all text after the placeholder will be that color so basically instead of turning into the group tag or group name it's turning into a color so and six this one is and e so basically it acts as a color okay so i actually almost forgot the team placeholders actually really luckily so there's three so there's actually three placeholders based around team which i talked all about teams in my latest news update video which i actually really liked and we had a special guest in it i mean you can go ahead and take a wild guess who the guest is and there's very few people that play housing that actually are public so it's a pretty good idea and i'm looking at you john don't know if there's a john in here but that's just a common name in america i think or maybe not yeah i'm just babbling on so there's player team name tag color and then players so if i do slash test placeholder 
percent player dot team dot name percent. It says I'm on red team. Oh, I'm gonna go switch to blue team. Now I'm on blue. And whatever color the team is, it just is literally just showing in. It does not seem to use whatever team color as the text color. But that's where the team color placeholder comes in handy. Just like the player group number, the team color changes the color of all text, succeeding it into the color of the team that you set up. And then the team tag, it's just like the group tag, it shows the tag along with the color. You don't need to put the color placeholder before the tag placeholder. And then last but not least is the more unique placeholder. It's the number of players on the player's team. So if I'm on the red team, it'll show, and everybody else is on red team, it'll show over many players there are, but if nobody's on blue team but me, it'll show one person. So if I do it right now, it'll only say one person. So player.team.players. And you can just do that and it tells you however many people are on your team. But if you do slash and then the team name, for example, blue, it'll show one. But if I do red, which is a team I'm not on, zero people. So the use for this is to show the number of players on a scoreboard for each individual team and it's useful if some action occurs or if a play it removes the player from a team and it shows like remaining players in a team like if someone dies like then bed wars let's look at bed wars for example on the scoreboard do you want to see how many players are left on the other teams and not just want to guess oh i don't know how long it's going to take to win yeah you have to make decisions based on how many players are on the team like should i go get diamonds or emeralds you want to make your players in your house make a good decision, so make sure to include this if you're having a team-based house. Now come on, that's enough about you. We need to know about the house itself. That's where the house placeholders come in. There may only be a couple, but they're extremely, extremely viable, and each one has its use. The first is house.name, and it literally just says the name of the house, which you set in house settings, house, set house name, or the command Elias. And it, whatever color it is, it will also show that. And yeah, that's literally the use. And by default, it's in the scoreboard. Like the default scoreboard shows the name of the house. The next one is house.guest, which shows the house guest. And this is also in the default scoreboard. So again, pretty basic, shows the guest. This actually has a pretty good use. So if you're making a house, like let's say, maybe if you wanna do a guest count, like if your house is starting to get pretty big and you wanna guest count, maybe you can do the live guest here on the left. So percent house.guest. And then on the right, we can do this stat placeholder, which we'll talk about in a bit. That way, in every time that reaches a certain amount of guests using a loop, then it increases the stat. And over time, the guest goals, you can tell people to invite their friends. Something that I actually have not seen before, which is actually really surprising. But what I have seen before is a cookie goal, which brings us to our next placeholder, house.cookies, which displays the number of cookies given. And like normal, it's reset on weekly, basis you know resets every sunday just like you can give more cookies every single sunday and again in the default scoreboard next is the house dot visiting rules visiting rules is all one word no dot it shows either public private party only etc and private is red public is green party is blue and it's all in their respective colors and the use is if if you want to show guests whether the house is public or private and make them feel special if it's private and they're in the house trust me they're gonna feel special for the first time ever and the last house but definitely not least is house stop players now you're probably like well i just talked about house guests what could be the difference well house players is actually a recently added one that i talked about in my update overview video which is awesome i may have mentioned it already or twice just still watch it well after this video of course but the house player shows everybody in the house including you so literally just adding one single number to it guest shows every rank but the owner and only one person can have owner which is you and you can't transfer ownership so basically literally just added a single number okay now we're to the date placeholders something that most of you if you're watching this probably don't have during valentine's day i'm just kidding just kidding i'm, I'm serious i'm kidding the date placeholders are everything related to time and calendar all of the date placeholders mention excluding unix so unix does not have this but you can add a time zone into it so let's, let's take this for example let's do the first one date dot day percent it shows the day which is currently february 16th so it shows 16th but what you can do is you can just do normal date dot day percent and it shows the current date. If you slash and then enter a time zone, for example, CST, PST, 
EST. Oh, I'm dumb. Some, I thought doing a different one would mean it's a different date, but it's the same date across the United States, so I don't know what I'm blabbing about. But the use is like calculations based on the day, such as playtime, or so players can see the day easier, like on a scoreboard, action bar, etc. Then there's the month of the year, which is date.month, and it shows the number month of the year. Example, January is 1, February is 2, which is currently February, so it shows 0, 2, and it will always show two digits, so if it's June, it'll show 06. I'm pretty sure June's a six month. Ah, we'll move on. And then there's also year, which is, surprisingly, date dot year, you guessed it right. And then, like the, every other one, you can add the time zone. I'm gonna leave it like it is, and it shows 2024. Still four years past the time of our lives. For playtime, I don't think there's a single house on the housing browser except Tommy Emmett. Tommy in it's Tommy in its talent show that can people are in for more than a year. Like I swear, I don't know how this house gets up here every time. Bro. Oh, look, another placeholder. We've done day, month, year. And next is minutes. Date dot minutes. It's the 48th minute of the hour, so it shows 48. And again, used for calculations like playtime. The display alongside the hour to show the military time. Wish the date dot hour is indeed in military time. It shows it's 17 o'clock right now, but 4 o'clock p.m. Oh, the military time. Or whatever all the world uses except America, basically. Then there's date dot seconds, which is literally how many, how many seconds within the hour until it gets to the next minute, which is always, always, always used in playtime. But if you want something that's always increasing, you should not use seconds. There's another placeholder, which is one I mentioned earlier that is used all the time, which is extremely, extremely useful once you learn how to use it. But before I dive into that, you should 100% go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like the video, because why not just click it one single click or tap if you're on mobile. But anyway, this is date.unix percent which is one, it's literally just that, no time zone. And as you can see, it's an amazingly long number. And you're probably confused. So if I put it on a hologram, let's just watch it for a second. As you can see, holograms update every three seconds. So Unix increases every single second. And it's like however many seconds since 1970. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. In short, it never stops updating, and Minecraft is not the only game that Unix is used. It's also used in, like, the backend. And this is not at all used to display. Like, you're not going to display the Unix on a board, but it's really just used for backend. I'm done keeping you up to date on the date placeholders, so let's go ahead and get to statistics, or as we call them in housing, stats. Literally, just a display of all the three different stat types in housing, which one of which got added very recently that also mentioned my video about the latest update. By now, you probably just want me to quit babbling about my latest video. Well, one of my latest videos. I promise I'm done now. But anyways, here's the three stats currently in housing. Percent stat.player, stat.global, and stat. Let's start off with the first two simple ones. The player and global. They act as percent stat dot either player or global, then a slash, and you type the stat name. Coin percent and if you use slash edit stats you can increase the stat and it'll update stat global is the same thing as a player stat except it's shared across every single person in the house and it uses a separate limit just like all three stats do with the slash limits command you can see the player stat keys and global stat keys that are allowed which is 200 of each and also 200 team stat keys and last thing about global is that they are not used for displaying data as much as they are like timers and events because you don't want to just every single person in the house to have the exact same amount of gold because that would make no sense because if someone buys a sword then how is anybody else going to buy a sword if he spent all the gold? Okay. Now the last one is the outlier of all the stat placeholders is percent stat dot team. Then you do slash and then the key just like the other ones. So if I do slash kills then you do another slash and type the team name. So if I do slash kills and then blue percent it'll show the kills for blue. And if I do the same thing again and do red percent, it's a different stat. You can have stats with the exact same name for every team. So I can have kills for the red team and another stat kills for the blue team, which is pretty useful. You absolutely have to input both the key and the team name for the desired team if you want it to work. Okay, so this is pretty random. Literally, it's one of the last placeholders we're talking about and it actually is random. So if I do slash test placeholder, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the placeholder percent random dot int slash one. 
I ran it a couple times and may or may not have got kicked because of spam. But what did you notice? So I typed in random int 1 and 5, but it did not choose 5. It chose 1, 2, 3, and 4, but not at all 5. Now the reason of this is because the first number is the minimum value, which means it can indeed pick 1. But the 5 is the maximum value that it will not pick. So this 1 and 5 picks between 1 and 4, unlike what it looks like. And it also works with negative numbers. So if you do negative 10 to 5, it'll pick a random number between them. And this is great for making random numbers with goals like a cookie or guess goal, or a random number for a loot drop. Because loot drops are pretty useful in like a dungeon sim where you're like fighting all these monsters. Okay, wow, now that was a lot of placeholders. Now there are so many ways to use each individual one that I may have not said all the methods. So make sure to tell me in the comments below what I missed and if I missed any sort of special use cases. Anyways, thanks for watching and be sure to sub and like. No, no pressure. Or is it? Anyways, thanks for watching and house on.